Hello and welcome to something new, something familiar, and something very different. It is, of course, the new EQB all-electric seven-seat SUV, and, well, my first impressions are quite good. I'm quite liking this as a place to be and a place to drive. But as we know, there is more to a car than just first impressions. It's one thing to drive a car for an hour or two, but it's another thing entirely to live with it. And that is exactly what we're going to do. I've got the keys to this EQB 350-4MATIC AMG line premium for the next few days, and we're gonna put it through its paces and put it through some real-world tests to find out just what this car is like to live with. Now, to find out about the rest of the Mercedes-Benz and Smart passenger car range, make sure that you're subscribed to our channel, hit the notifications icon so that you don't miss an upload. But without any further ado, let's get into it and find out what the EQB is like to live with. In short, more than you may realize at first glance. Now, I know from the side especially, you may think, well, it looks like a GLB, and you'd be right, because of course the car is based on the GLB, and to be honest, you'll either love or hate the styling. There seems to be no in-between whatsoever when it comes to the looks of the GLB and the EQB. What has remained is, well, my favorite styling feature on the car, which is this raised window line at the rearmost sections of the glass, which nicely accentuates the flared rear wheel arches. Down on the bottom, this is something that's actually seen on EQA, GLA, and GLB2, is this chrome strip on the black trim. Now, this helps, at least I think, to make the car not look as if it's just been parked on top of something. Have a look at some of the SUVs and crossovers that are coming out now and you'll see what I mean. What is new and EQ specific is the model badge uh, here and aerodynamically optimized alloy wheels. These are the 19 inch Y spokes that we've seen on the EQA AMG line premium before. And well, I'm still a fan of Y spoke wheels. Now, one of my favorite features on the Mercedes EQ range makes a very welcome return here. That is, of course, the light band that extends across the tailgate. Down here, the number plate has actually been moved. It's now on the bumper rather than on the boot lid like it is on the GLB. And I'm gonna try and make that the last time I mention that car in this video. We'll see how we get on. There are diffuser strakes on the outside to help clean up the air that flows underneath the car. Again, improve aerodynamics. And something that I noticed by accident almost is the weather strip on the bumper in chrome almost mirrors the indentations on the boot lid around the light bar. You've got to look out for it, but it's one of those things that when you see it, you just can't help but notice this each time you have a look at the car. And at the front, of course, there is another light bar, which makes me very happy. Now, as well as liking light bars just for the sake of liking them and think that they look really cool, they help to give the entire Mercedes EQ family a rather distinctive look when driving at night. Of course, the light bar switches on when the headlights come on. In between the headlight clusters is this, the black panel grille. This is blanked off to improve aerodynamics, and it makes it look, to me at least, like the grille and the headlights are one section. There's only one pretty much unbroken line that goes all the way from one side of the headlights and grille to the other. Further down, the batteries, of course, need cooling. It does have a radiator behind this grille, actually, so there's an inlet down at the bottom, a new design A-wing grille for AMG line, and the air can actually be channeled out through the sides here to go into the wheel wells and help clean up turbulent air, which is kicked up by the wheels turning as you're driving along. Under the bonnet is one of the car's electric motors. There is, of course, another one on the rear axle to give all-wheel drive. Both the motors are connected up to the car's 66.5 kilowatt hour capacity battery, and this is what is able to give the car a WLTP combined 257 mile driving range. Overall, I'd say, well, minus the light bars, of course, actually, but I'd say the styling tweaks are quite subtle. This isn't an electric car that shouts, look at me, I'm an EV, and I actually think that is quite a good thing. It feels very familiar in here, and I'd say that is a good thing. It's basically the same cabin that we've been getting used to 
from the rest of the compact car range over the last four years and well i think that's a good thing i like the way it's laid out i like where everything is it's very easy to get acclimatized in here for uk bound eqbs we now get this wood trim on the door panels and on the dash it's a nice touch it's a nice change if anything as well to be honest and ambient lighting comes as standard so all throughout the cabin and on the illuminated turbine vents which i do like very much if anything most of the differences are on the software and on the mbux side so we'll come back to that later on in the video but just sitting here the cabin feels like it's in or from rather a much larger car than the package that it is squeezed into it's very light open airy especially with the panoramic roof on amg line premium models and the windscreen does feel a little bit far away so it makes it seem like you're sitting about halfway along the entire length of the car but that is just a product of the a pillars being quite steep and quite far forward however there is more to this car than just the front row I would say quite. Now the EQB's party trick comes with, well, what you can do with the cabin and what you can do with the seats. The second row can slide forwards, it can slide backwards. This one closest to me individually, the two closest to the camera, they slide together. But each individual seat, you can adjust how much you would like the seat back to be reclined. So it should be easy for all your passengers to get comfortable in here. Now we'll do the all important test of can I fit behind myself? just but then again my seating position is pretty much always in the back of the car what you will notice is the floor is noticeably higher in eqb compared to the glb this is because the battery is in a two-tiered arrangement so it does eat into cabin space a little bit adults taller passengers will notice it to be honest i think it will be okay for kids in here if there's no one sitting in the central seat, then you can fold this down, turn it into an armrest and a double cup holder. There are some vents for the climate control in front of us and a USB-C charging slot here as well. This model's practicality trump card is found behind the second row as there is a third row of seats designed for passengers up to one and a half meters tall. Now these two seats, they can be folded back down into the boot floor when they're not needed. As a result, this means that there isn't too much underfloor storage space. But with the third row stowed, you have 495 litres of boot space, which is just five shy of an EQC. And if you fold down all of the seats, then you have plenty of room to take lots of things to the tip and throw them away. Yes, it can, unfortunately. But it's not saying anything at the moment which is definitely a good thing now if you'd rather carry around passengers that you'd like to spend some time with rather than a venomous reptile then the third row of seats could be very useful indeed these two seats in the back they have ice fix mounting points on them for child seats as well as additional usb-c charging ports In a nutshell, I would say this car is quick, especially as a 350 Formatic, which is easily my powertrain of choice for the model. It's quiet, refinement levels are really good. The loudest thing inside the cabin, other than me speaking, is some noise coming from the tires. There's virtually no wind noise at all, actually, which you may not expect for a car with such tall body panels, large glass surfaces, and a very steeply raked windscreen. But genuinely, it is nearly silent in here. And I would say it's comfortable as well. The suspension, I think, has been set up really well to cope with two tons. You know, this is not a light car by any stretch of the imagination, but it doesn't feel as though it's that heavy. It masks its weight really well, and it feels very planted, very stable. And even on rougher surfaces, the big shocks they don't really translate through into the car it's got a great primary and secondary ride i'd say it's quite easy to place and position on the road visibility is excellent with those huge glass surfaces although in town you will notice that it is on the larger side of the compact car family personally i think it is best on motorways and dual carriageways and with the strong performance from the twin electric motors keeping up with faster flowing traffic is easy so as it's a Mercedes EQ product, there are paddles on the back of the steering wheel to allow you to pick and choose between the car's staged regeneration settings or staged energy recovery settings, 
or stage recuperation settings or stage regen settings. Any of those terms, they are all interchangeable and they are all correct. I tend to refer to it as regen. So it ranges from not a lot of regen in D+, to a fair amount more in its D setting, and then quite a lot in D-. Will nearly bring me to a stop without touching the brake pedal. Now pick and choose which mode to use based on well, where you're driving, what the traffic conditions are like. You'll probably prefer the heavier regen settings when you're driving in town. It gives you the opportunity to do a lot of one pedal driving, it just makes it easier. Plus there are no gears or clutches to grind and burn through when you are in the city. The mode I tend to favour is D Auto, which is accessed by pulling and holding the plus paddle. Now, the clue's in the name, it allows for automatic regen based on what the car is detecting about the world around it with all of its sensors, radars and cameras. It will decide whether to allow the car to coast and keep up with traffic or to start slowing you down to maintain a safe distance to the vehicle in front or just to get you to the right speed for an upcoming roundabout or junction. Now I find that it matches up with my own driving style really well. It feels very natural so if you're new to Mercedes EQ products give this a go and it will help you to get acclimatised. Just keep in mind it can be very insistent sometimes on slowing you down when it realises you're on a slip road. All in all, I'd actually say, first and foremost, it feels like a Mercedes. It, of course, feels like an electric Mercedes, but the response from the electric motors is actually quite progressive. It's not quite as on-off as a strobe light, as you may think. It's really easy just to sort of gently encourage the car along. Now, that's not to say it's a slouch. If anything, it's uh, quite the opposite of one of them. The 354 Matic has a genuinely hot hatch baiting 0 to 60 time of just 6 seconds and well it's easy to uh, dispatch people who struggle to get within 25 miles an hour of the current indicated national speed limit as well. Like I mentioned earlier the system in front of us is MBUX or Mercedes-Benz user experience and this is presented on the twin 10.25 inch displays that make up the widescreen cockpit. Now there is a lot of stuff that you can do with this than there is a lot of information that it can give you but I personally think it is quite intuitive and if you're coming to this system for the first time from older versions of Command or even MMI and iDrive I do think you will be up to speed in no time. The usual ways of controlling the system return with the touch screen in the centre, the touchpad on the centre console plus my preferred way of interacting with the system whilst on the move, the touch pads on the steering wheel with the one on the right controlling what is on the driver's display and the one on the left controlling the central infotainment screen. With this actually, when you're using the touch pads, whatever you're controlling, whatever you're moving will have a bit of a glow around it so it just helps to know what you are adjusting. Of course there is the voice assistant which is activated by saying the magic words and when the car is connected up to Mercedes Me, you can use what three words for more precise navigation. If you're anything like me and have the sense of direction of a wayward firework, then you'll find this very useful indeed. Hey Mercedes. How can I help? Navigate to what three words screen mental nowadays. Here is what I found. Where do you want to go? There we go. Let's go. So far, so familiar, but this is where things start to get a little bit different. Now, because the route is longer than my range, the car has programmed in a charging stop automatically. So if it thinks that you'll reach an intermediate destination or your final destination with less than 10% charge remaining, it will program in a charging stop and it will try and prioritize the fastest ones that it can find en route. There's also a dedicated EQ menu. This is where you'll find everything that you need to know about the electric side of the car. It lets you search for charging stations nearby, along your route, near your destination. And you can pick and choose between different charging programs. You can tell the car that you want it to charge up to 100%, 80%, and so on and so forth. And you can limit the amount of current that it will accept when plugged into a power source should you need to or want to. 
There's also a display for consumption and you can see energy flow whilst you're on the move, which is something that I quite like. The technology doesn't just stay in the car though, it does extend out into the Mercedes Me app. Interactive services are included for the first three years from the date of registration to Mercedes Me, although you will always get a breakdown of what service runs for how long when you are connected up. I think it is a really key part of making a Mercedes EQ product convenient to live with, if anything. Of course, you can view all things technical about the car. We can see that so far it's averaged 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour, which would return a range of just under 180 miles based on that consumption. And just like within the car, you're able to plan routes ahead of your departure time and get these sent to the car. If your route is longer than your range, then just like on the main MBUX screen, it will program in charging stops and intermediate destinations for you. So what is it like to use? I would say overall, quite easy. And there's a lot of information and a lot of stuff that you can do with the systems both in and out of the car. Well, we've all been there before, haven't we? We're at a petrol station and we see someone in an electric car and we think, what imbeciles? Don't they know that their own electric car doesn't have a fuel tank? Well, that is where you are wrong because behold, here is a fuel tank. Now I know it didn't come with the car and it's not part of the structure, but I would say yes, you can actually put fuel in an electric car. Absolutely incredible. Yes, you can. The EQB comes as standard with two different charging cables, one for domestic sockets and one for higher powered AC charging outlets. The EQB can charge at up to 11 kilowatts AC, which means a full charge is completed in just five hours and 45 minutes. This goes up to nine and a half hours when charging at home on a seven kilowatt wall box. Now, a simple rule of thumb to use to quickly estimate how long it's going to take your electric car to charge is just to divide the battery capacity in kilowatt hours by the electric input in kilowatts. So for the EQB, that would be 66.5 divided by seven for a home wall box, and that would give you nine and a half hours. Now, just underneath the AC charging inlet, there is another socket for DC rapid charging, and as luck would have it, there are some DC chargers over there. So let's go and have a look. Plugging into a DC rapid charger means the EQB can charge it up to 100 kilowatts and deliver a 10 to 80% top up in just 32 minutes. Now admittedly, it's not the fastest in its class, but I think if you're breaking up a longer journey, then you will tend to spend this amount of time in a service station or a place like here at GridServe anyway. Now, when I was filming both living with an EQC and living with an EQA, by the time I'd done all of my bits to camera and gone off and had a healthy, if slightly oily breakfast, the car had reached 80% charge and more. Now, of course, an electric car is only as green as the electricity that goes into it, but we're at the GridServe Electric Forecourt here in Braintree, taking 100% renewable energy for the car's batteries. Now, if you're able to run your electric car using renewable energy, then its overall lifetime CO2 emissions will end up being much lower than those of a combustion powered car. If you want to find out more about the environmental side of what running an electric car and living with an electric car is like, make sure to check out our video Living With an EQA, which actually features the conveniently placed EQA, which is just behind us. And make sure to check out the links to the life cycle assessment done by Polestar in the description for that as well. Using the public network can be made more convenient by using a Mercedes Me Charge card. A three-year subscription to Mercedes Me Charge is included with every brand new EQB, and this allows you to use about 80% of the UK's public charging network with just one account and one monthly billing. So now the batteries are topped up, let's make use of the electricity and go that way. So just keep in mind that all of the words I'm about to say are about a two ton, seven seat electric SUV. Doesn't matter, this could have nine seats and eight doors and weigh another half a ton. This is great. On a B road, I am so pleased with how this is performing. 
the power delivery from the twin electric motors and actually perhaps more importantly the regen across the two is just so good it's able to shuffle power delivery but then use each motor to slow the car down when you need it to just right i've got it in sport mode and in d plus so minimum regen that helps me to slow down to the right speed when i'm approaching the corners and well as is the case with all EVs, the art form is to turn in, load up, regen, use the weight to your advantage, and bam, and you'll have a very, very smooth cornering experience. Oh, this is great fun. <laughs> now, of course, I'm not an SUV man at heart. I prefer to be lower down to the ground, but you will not hear me complaining. This handles like the GLB. That is some great praise from me. I think the steering's absolutely spot on in that and it has translated 100% over to the EQB. Really well weighted. You can put a lot of faith and confidence in it. I am loving this. I'm absolutely loving this. So in short, to answer the question, is it fun to drive? Oh yes, oh yes. Picking your perfect EQB has been made easy as all you need to do is select the exterior colour and the equipment level. I think the standard equipment offering is really good but if you would like some more features then take a look at the premium or launch edition specifications which of course are based on AMG line. The one featured in this video is a 350 formatic AMG line premium. Prices are on screen now if you want to find out more then make sure to check out the brochure that I've linked in the description. First things first, I like it. I really do like it. There is just something about this shape and style that draws me to the car. But it's more than just the looks for me. It's got quite the personality. I've enjoyed the way that this car has felt hustling down B roads and cruising along motorways. Take the time to get to know the EQB and it certainly will reward you. Overall, I think it is, well, first and foremost, a Mercedes, but one that just so happens to be electric. I think it's a car that's easy to get on with. I think it could be very convenient to live with, especially with the ability to charge at home if you can, the strong on-road performance, the good real-world usable range from the battery, plus all of the different seating and interior layout combinations that you can think of. Are there any jobs for the facelift? Yes, I think there always are. They're just two small bits for me. I think 22 kilowatt AC charging would be good at some stage, and the DC charging capability will need to be bumped up to keep up with its competitors plus i would just reduce the amount of energy recovery in the d plus drive mode but then again maybe that is just me i would say that this is the closest thing to a sort of mini eqc were such a thing to exist that i've driven thus far in some ways i think it is even better Regardless, it's entered a very small group of cars which I've had the keys to and within my first few minutes and miles of driving, felt right at home. I think that's some really high praise. So, what do you think? Would you like to have a go? Would you like to see what an EQB is like to live with? If so, well, in the immortal words of George Gray, come on down, come and see us at any of our sites at Mercedes-Benz Hertfordshire. If you want to find out about the rest of the Mercedes-Benz and Smart passenger car range, then make sure to check out the rest of the videos on our channel. Subscribe to us so that you don't miss a thing. And we'll see you again. Actually, no, there is one more test that we need to do. <laughs>